How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Daddy Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Corinthia. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads, Hello and welcome to Corinthia. I hope you have fun. Welcome to the map of Corinthia. The map is of, from my home country, Austria, Corinthia. On this map you will find 115 fields, meadows, 12 forest areas in large to small split sections. You will find a quaint village with a farmer's market where you can sell products from the farming and productions, a biogas plant, inn, supermarket, agricultural trade, fish farm, and sawmill were installed as productions and sales outlets. In addition, two building sites are prepared for free disposal. It is also a contracting company. As a player, you get a starting courtyard with two fields and various vehicles and machines. The stables for horses, cows, pigs, and chickens are also installed on the farm. The stable for the sheep and the cow pasture are located just outside. You can take water from the lakes and rivers Lear. There are mods required for this map, starting with the modernized field mill by Adub Modding ABP team. Homestead, Homestead Pig Barn by Pezor Modding, Diesel Production Pack by MTL Modding Team, Pallet Factory by ER Shaba, VSR Modding Sewer, German Fire Station by NRX -E 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 -E? NRX -E -E? Uh, Small Garden by Happy Mole, T Tyrolene Dairy by to who goodness tyroler okay let's spell this out t i r o l e r h e i m a d h modding who that yeah i don't know even how to pronounce that landsberg farms uh by bernie cs and bunker silo with roof by agrar modding this map was created by Black Pat Modding and is 267.19 megabytes to download. And as you can see, before we even look at the map, look at that stunning view. But make note of that stunning view. So, looking at the map, this is what it looks like. We start here, kind of in the center of the map, just above one of our fields. That's right, I said above one of our fields. I'll show you a little bit better in a moment here. So we start out with farmlands number one down here, three, 29, right where we're at, 54, and 140. You cannot purchase all areas of the map. Oops, wait, let me go back. Uh, farmland number one is a wheat field ready to harvest. Number three, wheat field ready to harvest. 29, wheat field ready to harvest. 54, wheat field ready to harvest. And 140 is the starting farm. Not all areas are purchasable on this map. You do have animal pens to start out with. Contracts are available on this map. You do start out with production chains. And there are no collectibles to uh, this map. If we take a look at mods specific to this map, there's nothing under the buy menu, but under the build mode, if we take a look under the buildings and silos, scroll over to the right, you will see Corinthia. Those are mods specifically made for this map. There's nothing else, nothing under sheds, silo extensions, containers, tools, or farmhouses. Under productions, if we go under factories, scroll over, you will see a couple right here, Corinthia. Those are mods specific to this map. Nothing under selling points, greenhouses, orchards, or generators. Under animals, we do have one there for cows. Nothing for horses, nothing for pigs. Sheep, we do have one. And chickens, nothing for bees or others. There's nothing under the decorations tab whatsoever. And under landscaping, under painting, we do have several additional paint swatches. Now, remember when I said that uh, we are above our farm, our field? Field number 29. Look at this beast of a field. Look how steep that is. This map is next level crazy. I cannot wait for you all to see this. Now, 
we are a little ways away from our starting point. And this is where you start out with. This is where you start. Like, you got a little duck pond right here, just kind of tucked away, like, in the hills. You got a couple little benches, little, uh... I'm not sure if this is, like, a little crypt, or... I'm not sure. I don't know what... What is that? Huh. Yeah, don't know what this is. Either way, I mean, this whole... This is stunning. Stunning, stunning. Anyways... I'm going to go ahead and teleport to the starting farm because if we take a look, like I said, I'm here, the starting farm's up here. It's a little ways, quite a walk, but we will be driving back this way. I'll point out where we were, and just the drive is, again, stunning. There's so many gorgeous views on this map. Be ready to be amazed. So... This right here is the road you take to come... Nope, I went in the wrong direction. This is the road you would take coming into the farm. So we're just going to follow this until the entrance, which is right over here. You can see just a, a starting farm itself. It's just a, a quaint little starting farm. Nothing like too extravagant or anything. But it's just tucked away in the hills, just out in the middle of nowhere. It is so cool. We have a chicken pasture right here where you have room for 80 chickens. And just behind it, you have two small gardens with garden substrate. If you do not know where garden substrate comes from, that actually comes from a mod which is not installed. So that's an issue. So there is a another mod by happy mole and it has all the individual components in bags and one of the bags that is available is garden substrate so that is an issue that should come downloaded beforehand i will let me take a look and see if i can find that just really really fast because that's that's a f issue that you yourself can fix let's see uh m zero l e Okay, here it is. It's the package of premium pallets. So if you download that mod as well as this map, which downloaded everything else besides this, again, it's called the package of premium pallets and bags by Happy Mole. If you download that within the uh, numerous amounts of items that are in there, one of them is the garden substrate. So that is a necessary component to be able to use this and make this work. You can see all of the recipes require that garden substrate. So I'm actually glad I came across that because that could have been a problem for a lot of people. But it should still be fixed. We've got two of them here. Now let's head over in this direction. Just around the corner here. Right here, we got a fuel tank that we can fill up right here. We have our silo right here. Hayloft over here. Come around the back here. We have a little pig pasture where we can have 10 pigs. Over here, this is a bale storage. So you have room for 350 bales, and you can see there's a collision right here, so you can't walk through this. This is where it's actually going to store all the bales. Is right in this little section here. Over here is the sheep barn, where you can have room for 40 sheep. And you know what? That's something that just occurred to me. I didn't uh, show off any of the inputs and outputs. Input for feed for the pigs right here, and water back over here. Sheep. Feed goes here. Water goes here. Wool spawns here. Manure heap right over here. Over here, we have a cow pasture for room for 45 cows. Water, feed, and milk. Tucked away right here, we have our wardrobe trigger and sleep trigger. Let's see, around this side, and tucked away in here, 
is a cow barn. For room for 45 cows here. You can see, this is where we feed them. There's also a little signs here. Feeding goes here. We've got our milk tucked away over in the corner over here, if I can get to it. There we go. Milk. Again, follow the signs. Milk chamber. Our slurry output. Again, liquid manure. So nicely labeled, easy to kind of find your way around things. And now what I need to do... is remember how to get down to the back side of the property. Let's see, was it? it wasn't this way, no. So, like I was saying earlier, this map is stunning. It really is gorgeous. There's tons going on here. The road networks are insane. You'll have to pay so much attention to where you're going, what road leads where, it's very overwhelming at times. So tucked away in the back here. We do have a horse pasture right back here. Room for five horses. Water and food go right there. Now I just need to... Oh, you know what? I am just skipping around everywhere, aren't I? I completely forgot to look over field prices. So you get a good range on this map. So starting with here, 26,000. Super, super cheap. Now, before actually, before we go on any further and before I show any of that... The reason that a lot of these are going to be cheap is uh, quite a bit of dynamics. Uh, so they're going to be small. But the problem that you're going to run into is that even though these fields are small, you're going to need some beastly equipment. You are going to need some real heavy-duty equipment because of all the hills. Again, reference field number 29, we saw that one. The fields are pitched in such a way that you need a lot of power to be able to get up and down and actually do the work that's necessary to get the product off of them. And they're all like that. They all have, to one degree or another, rather steep elevation to them. So it's going to be difficult to do anything when all you have, especially to start out with, is the Deutzfar Harvester. It's not powerful enough. It's not going to have enough torque to be able to run the header and make its way up, up the uh, slopes and whatnot. So you're going to have to come up with, you know, some kind of better equipment that can also run smaller headers because you've got such narrow lanes and roadways. Like you can see here, I mean, you get a little bit of room over here, but then it eventually just narrows down. So you've got to have good, powerful equipment, but things are going to be narrow as well. So look at this driveway. This driveway leading to your farm is breathtaking. Let's go into first person. Look at that. Just cut right into the hillside. Just really, really nice. It really is stunning. And then you get around the corner there, and then the elevation changes. I mean, just look off to the right there. Look how much, how high we are. And that's our field right there. Actually, I just passed right by that little uh, spawning point right there. You heard the ducks right there at the beginning. There's the stairs that lead right down to it. You can see just how much of a pitch there is, especially up here. Let me see if I can get back up. Yeah. Look at that. That's, that's crazy, the amount of pitch that's on this. This map will not, will not, I repeat, be for beginners. Because not only are you going to have to worry about figuring out the game, but then you're also going to have to realize that, and realize it rather quickly, that you're going to need better and bigger equipment to be able to do the jobs that you're going to have to do around here. It's not going to be as simple as just hopping on and just playing the game. All right. 
right, so here, if we come down this driveway. We have more of these gardens. And again, they are going to require that substrate. You can see small garden, $500. There's three of them for 500 bucks. We'll go ahead and buy one just to prove garden substrate. So that is something you're going to have to download in addition to. It will not download automatically. At least it didn't do it for me. So three of those small gardens there, each of them 500 bucks. Now again, when you're on this map, if this is a map that interests you, if you think that this is just stunning, it looks good, and you really want to hop on and give it a try, pay attention to where you're going before you go there. And what I mean by that is what appears to be probably the most direct route to any of the places on this map, it's never that simple. It is never as easy as just going from one place to another. So the next place here, I thought I had to be on the main road over here to get to this next point of interest, when in reality, nope, wasn't even close. Oh, and I even took the wrong lane this time. Meant to take this road, because you see how it just split off there? And it's so easy, if you're not paying attention, just be like, zip, and just go wherever, you, whatever lane takes you. Again, look at all the ducks and just the details that are tucked away in all these areas, in all the corners on this map. There's so much stuff going on. So right here, you have a dairy for $70,000. You can purchase this. We're on the back side. Whoops, 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 whoops. Output here. Input there. So when I came on here earlier to kind of plan my routes and to kind of get familiar with the map, the amount of time it took me to kind of get everything under control and trying to plan out a route and trying to figure out where I'm going, what to, what's important, what's not important. Wow. I spent so long just getting to this point of recording. This map is nuts. Just absolutely nuts. Now the one kind of negative I will say about this map, well, th there's gonna be a couple of negatives on this map, but one of them is just how far you have to go to get to certain places. Nothing is direct, nothing is straightforward. You have to like just go out of your way to get to certain places. So tucked away over back here. This is the farmer's market sell point. Coming up here, we'll make a left. And this is one of the places I'm talking about where it's not straightforward. It's not just quick jot around to get to. Actually, the next two places, as a matter of fact, are exactly like that. All right, so this is the fish farm. You can purchase a fish farm for $150,000. Inputs here, outputs here. Now, again, I said earlier, the details. The details, the details, the details. Check it out. Let me see. What, there it is. Actual fish swimming in the pond for the fish farm. How cool is that? Just, again, a small detail. You might have never even known it was there. I almost didn't notice it was there. I just so happened to come back over the bridge. And as I was coming over the bridge, I saw something moving. And there it was. So I... Oh, um, 
Oh, that something that probably has to be fixed. So now coming up. The one thing I will say about this map, which is rather nice, is there are certain indicators of where to go for certain things. So there's this car right here. And I found that though the car on the side of the road kind of indicates that this is a main road of travel, even though this obviously doesn't look like a main road of travel, this is where you have to go to get to the next point of interest. And this is the one I was, another one I was talking about where it's kind of off the beaten path, out of the way. And if you want to utilize it, it's going to, you know, just put you out of the way of everything else. So you're coming out here for just this. Got some lumberjacks out in the background there. Now this is the next point of interest. We come out here. This is the dairy for 230,000. You can purchase this. There's two dairies on this map. Inputs here, outputs here. All this is, is cheese. It's a cheese input. You put in milk and you take out cheese. That's it. But, very nice. And it's, again, just look how beautiful it is back here. You got this little duck pond right here. Got the ducks swimming. And then just overlooking the forest. Like, how cool is this? Now we're just going to backtrack a ways. Actually, quite a ways because... And, and again, this is what this map is going to do to you. Is you're going to have to backtrack and go over your tracks so many times that it will get frustrating. It, it, at least when I was trying to learn this map and figure out how to get to place to place, I was starting to get frustrated because I kept seeing and going over the same paths that I was used to seeing or that I've already seen up until that point. And it makes doing a map tour like this a little frustrating because you're seeing, you know, the same areas. You want to get on and show like all the new areas, you know, places that people haven't seen up until that point. And I mean, the, the cool thing about this map that even though we're going down the same road as we came on we're coming at it from another angle and we can kind of get a better appreciation of how the train is actually laid out in this direction as well so we can see just how stunning it is going to where we were now we're getting to see again just how stunning and just how that backdrop how the uh, edge of the map really works well with this map with all the undulations normally you'll see the map uh be you know slightly hilly or or something like that and then they have that mountainous backdrop and terrain um that just really makes the map look out of place and doesn't make it look good but this map really works with that backdrop one thing one word of warning, those poles that are lining the road, they do have collisions. So be careful. If you are driving around, you're not paying attention, you, you will hit those. And I have had an occasion where I've hit it just right to where I've like bounced over, flipped over, and I could see if I was towing something, I could lose something very, very easily. Okay, now we're coming up to our next point of interest right over here. Take this side road. And then right over here. This is the diesel production. Or I'm sorry, the diesel factory. 170,000 to purchase this. And you know what? 
I'm going to borrow some money real quick. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to buy this and buy the fish farm just so we can see what uh, items are needed for each of those. Now, these are separate mods that are required for this map at time of download. So you might already be familiar with these. But for those of us that aren't, we can go ahead and just show this just real quick. So 170 purchase this. And you can see to make diesel, you need sunflowers, canola, soybeans. Those three components will make you diesel. And then let's go to the fish farm real quick. And you know what? Here, let's do this real fast. So we started out right here. We teleported to the main farm, made our way to see everything around here. Came around to here and we saw the... Wait, did we see this? We didn't see this. I completely skipped this. Wow, I'm batting a thousand tonight. So... We come off the main road. This is our main driveway right here. Leads to our farm. We come up this hill and tucked around the back. I can't believe I missed this. This is, what was this called? The Fruit Purchase Snot Spoon. I think that's supposed to be Cell Point. I'm not 100% sure though. So anyways, now... We were supposed to be here. We came around this curve, this down this giant hill right here, around this curve where we saw the small gardens, came up and around here, came out to the dairy, came back up this main road, up to the fish farm. I'm sorry, skipped that. Uh, went to the farmer's market, then to the fish farm, back out to here, up this kind of switch back to the other dairy, back down here, all the way to this point, and now we're here at the diesel production. Now, let's go to the fish farm real quick. We'll buy that just so we can see exactly what that requires. 150,000. And you need corn, mineral feed, wheat, potatoes, barley. All those, and then you'll produce fish. Now, I will say, you need 2, 4, 6, 850 liters of incoming product for 500 outgoing. So you are going to lose product, but as long as the fish sell for, you know, better than any of those products combined. Uh, 3,000 and as high as four. So eh, that may or may not work out for your advantage. So uh, do a bit of research and figure that out. Let's go back to the tractor. Okay, so inputs right here and outputs are... Oh, there, it's right behind me. Output is right there. Come out this way. So now, to my left, this is the agricultural trade cell point. Back here tucked away in the back there that is the forestry cell point now i will say because again this is a mod that is required for this map to utilize this at least when i use it normally you could use these little hash box here and then hit the wood cell trigger but when i tried this specific mod it didn't work for me you actually have to put it on top of these rails here and then click the cell wood trigger in order to get it to function so just a word of wisdom and another cell point right here this is the old men's grain cell point now again we need to backtrack a little ways more ducks in the pond back there again it's those details I, I know I say this a lot, especially on map tours, but details, in my opinion, are king. They make or break a map, and if you have a map that has just little tiny extras, the ducks are just such a minute little detail, but it's enough to really kind of draw your in to the world that's being laid out and created here. Okay, stop here, 
up the driveway right here. This is, oh, I lost it. House, house sale yearly sell point, U-R-L-I. Again, you are gonna need some powerful equipment but you need narrow equipment too because look how narrow this is like that's not going to fit a whole big old trailer or semi truck or anything like that it is going to be it's going to be some effort to really kind of figure out how you want to proceed on this map Again, backtracking down the hill. Here, we'll make a right. Now, this leads me to another problem that I have this map. So you take a look at the road here. This is supposed to be like a dirt path road. You can kind of make that out based on, you know, the site that you can see here but the problem is, is that the road is not three-dimensional it is two-dimensional and it looks so bad it looks so bad it's flat there's no texture it's there's no bump so you're not getting the full immersion this texture as well as another texture uh, just really are not rendered properly in my opinion it could be just a, a an issue coming to console kind of thing or uh, some other potential issue but not uh, not quite sure wood chips are spawning here for your sawmill which is just down here as you can see the wrench and right here hundred thousand dollars for this outputs go here inputs right here with the wood cell trigger right here and again wood chips back there yeah see again look how flat and just it looks so bad I, I really, really hope that that's just like a, a issue getting ported over a console and that gets fixed in an update. I really hope because there are those roads on this map where you can see using them and it's going to really draw you away from the immersion that is on this map. And you can tell so much time and effort was put into this map. Uh, yes, back here. Through here. Now this is the sale of pallets sell point. here make a left follow this around all right right here we have the tailor shop hundred thousand to purchase this inputs here wardrobe trigger here and outputs normally are back here but just occurred to me I don't recall seeing an output. And then around this side you have the sale market sell point. Tucked away back here. This is the modernized flour mill. You can purchase this for nine. I'm sorry, hundred thousand dollars. 
you have your output here, your input here, and what makes this a modernized flour mill is that you get a bunch of additional stuff. Now, we will go ahead and purchase this just so we can see it, but look at all the recipes here. But a requirement is a power source. Diesel is a part of this top uh, set of recipes here, and you can see all these then make flour, chaff, stones, and pig feed. You can also make breads and cake at this location as well with various recipes. Now, the cool thing, too, is that you have uh, electricity as a power source and you have methane as a power source. So if you have a uh, biogas plant on the map that can accept you having electricity and methane, then you can actually use those as the power source. Or if you have another... Uh, another mod that allows you to do that as well because there are other mods that allow you to get those materials as well this is the output for your chaff you got inputs and outputs anybody who's uh, familiar with my the Valid the Old Farm Let's Play series is familiar with that particular set of uh, production right there. Right here we have a gas station and beside it we have the diesel sale cell point. Right there. And now we have to go, this is the other texture I was talking about, is this kind of trail texture here. It's all flat and just, it doesn't look right. Something about it just doesn't that it's so smooth that the driver isn't bouncing around, it isn't, uh, it just doesn't feel real. Like it just kind of takes you out of the area, the immersion that you're in. All right, so right here, we have the animal dealer. Now, you can come to this location and purchase your animals directly, or you can purchase them from any pens and pastures you have installed on the map right away. You can do that right from this location using this icon. The problem is, is that if you use this icon without an animal trailer, you will incur a delivery fee. Essentially, what is happening is you are getting a uh, extra fee for the animal dealer to bring the animals to your pens and pastures. And it can get a little expensive, depending on how many animals you have and the type of animal you have. So a adult cow will cost you $100 on most maps. And it's $100 per cow. So if you need hundreds of cows, that's going to add up really quickly. And it's going to eat into any kind of profit that you get from those animals down the line. So what you can do is bring an animal trailer to this location load into the animal trailer directly and from there take it to the pen and pasture pen or pasture that you are looking to fill and that will save you the money for the delivery fee now tucked around the back side over here this is the pet trade bale sales sell point this around back to the main road now the next area that we were coming to kind of confuses me it almost appears to be a small secondary farm but there's nothing else here besides these couple of you have storage silos and a repair point. That's really it. You get the storage uh, facility right here. But you can purchase this. We'll call this farm number two just for sake of argument. And if we go to the map, we'll take a look at what we have seen up until this point. 
So we were, I believe, up, yes, to the diesel factory. We then came out to see all these various sell points over here, came back up and around to the house sale yearly, back down over to the sawmill, up and back down to here where we saw the tailor shop as well as the sale market, went across the street. Actually, I think we went to the sale of pallets first and then came over here. That's correct. We then saw the modernized flour mill, gas station, diesel sales. We then came out to the animal dealer, came back up to here. Now, farmland number 160 for $20,784. If we purchase that, you can see we had access to all this stuff regardless of purchasing it or not. But you have a repair trigger right here. A diesel tank right here you can fill up. A Karma 16 silo, which is for your seeds and mineral feed. A liquid uh, fertilizer tank and a solid fertilizer tank. And again, you also have a bunch of storage space right here, which is nice. You got a uh, big cavernous area here. Now, tucked away on the back side of the farm is an area that you don't own, but I cannot figure out its purpose because back here... I, I don't recall seeing anything that will affect these. So you've got a slurry silo right here with a slurry extension, and then you've got two manure heaps. But as far as I'm aware, there's nothing around here that would fill into these manure heaps. There's no animals, there's no... There's nothing back here as far as I'm aware. Like, I've looked around and just... Did a quick flyover just to see there's nothing within the immediate facility that would trigger manure going into these. And these really don't work that well as a kind of input uh, for yourself. Now you can kind of just have it sit there inside of it, but it's not going to activate it like an actual silo and be able to take out at a reliable rate. Catch up with my notes, make sure I'm heading the right direction. Okay, I believe. Yes, we're heading the right direction. Okay. Now again, some of these roads, and you're going to see one coming up right here, are just intense. Like, they remind me a lot of uh, the map Homolkra, and how they just kind of are tucked away into the forest, and how, like, really elevated they can get. Like, how steep the incline can be. And you'll see it coming up right here. You can see the tractor is like skipping around. It doesn't want to get up there. So if you're towing something, likely you're not getting up this this particular road. Continue to head up the main road over in this direction. Whoops. And now we can make a right. Keep heading in this direction. We are going to have to backtrack, but that's okay. All right, coming up on my left, we have a gas station.
Oh, did I miss the turn? I missed the turn completely. Oh, see, there's those collisions I was talking about. Yeah, see, completely just drove right by it. Didn't even see it coming. For some reason... Did I miss something? Sorry, I just need to... I did. Okay. We'll have to come back to that. So, carpentry right here for 60,000. Input here, wood cell trigger here, and output there. Now let's backtrack to the area I was supposed to stop at first. But again, see, and this is what I'm talking about with the roads and whatnot. You need to know exactly where you're going, because I just... Normally I do fairly well with remembering, oh hey, that's the turn I need to go down. But for some reason, this map, just because of how intricate, and really on the small map on the tiny corner there, um, you really have a hard time kind of making out where... Is this it? No, this isn't the right turn. Nope. Okay. It's a little bit further down. But there are times where you have trouble reading where the road network is. Like, you look at the map and you can barely see this road here between 102 and 99. So we're just going to continue to follow this out until we get out to the next point of interest. And this is, again, another road I was talking about where just this is the only purpose this road has is to take you out here to the next production point. And it's one of those that it can be frustrating when you have to drive all this way out just for that one thing. And it's a long trip out here. Like, it's not, you know straightforward all right and then here we come up to the cogs instead of the wrench this is the lime factory. You can purchase this for $80,000. Inputs here and output there. got to backtrack all the way to the main road. Let's see. reach the crane here we'll make a right and then here we'll whoops 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 
Well, that's the right. And then tucked away back here. This is the main shop area. So you got your repair trigger right here. Shop trigger right here. And then we leave out of here. This way, up the hill a little ways, until we get right here at the bakery. $50,000 will purchase the bakery, and, oops, inputs here, and typically outputs are right here, but no hash box is there to indicate anything. This building is purchasable, this is a uh, firehouse here. So you can purchase this and you can actually use it, but without purchasing, you can't actually do anything with it. Now head back to the main road. Well, not the main road, but the kind of side branch road that you came in on. We're just going to keep following this up. Now, coming up on my right, tucked around the back here, this is LP's Country Trade Cell Point. And then right across the street, Tucked around over here. This is the pallet factory. Twenty-five thousand will purchase this, and you can see wood in, pallets out. Wood chip is a byproduct. Inputs here, uh, wood cell trigger here, outputs there, and wood chips. I believe. Hmm. It's actually a good question. I'm not quite sure where the wood chips are supposed to spawn. Normally there's either a pipe or a collection point, but I'm not seeing one. Huh. Well, if it doesn't spawn there, you can always send them on distribute and send them to a place where you can either spawn them or use them for something else. Here is the spinnery. Purchase that for sixty thousand, and you have your inputs here, outputs there. We're just going to continue to follow this until our last. Whoops last point of interest which is down at the end of this road again now we got that transition into that mud kind of road and just looks flat and doesn't 
give the the kind of ride that you would anticipate this kind of road texture would give you should be seeing the tractor just bouncing all over the place the person in the tractor just bouncing up and down and they're really not so tucked around on this side we have a couple of small bunker silos right here And down here is the biogas plant. Now you do start out with owning the biogas plant. And you can tell that by one says that you're owned, <laughs> that you own it. But this also takes a couple of additional items. So you got the silage, slurry, manure, and sugar beet cut. All of those we're used to seeing. But chaff is not. So that's nice. Solid inputs here, liquid inputs here, liquid outputs, aka digestate, here. And that is it for the most part. Now, one other thing I want to show is kind of a uh, thing of note. If you take a look around the map, you'll see these little itty bitty plots. Like 170, 171, uh, we got a few of them up here, 174, 173. All of these, as far as I can tell, are apple trees. They're very cheap. $768 for this. And you can see, now we have an apple tree that we're able to use. So let's buy all three of these. If we go in the productions, scroll down to the bottom. There we go. So water to apples or water manure and apples. Now, that will increase the cycles per month. So you're not increasing the output. You're just increasing the amount of times the recipe runs. So you will get, what is that? 30 apples a month for this one versus uh, 60 in this one. So it's kind of a slow recipe. I think that's why there's so many different trees out there and so many different plots for you to buy four trees. So again, you got a couple here in the North you got, let's see, a couple here in the village, a few more down south, a couple more right here, and all of those you can purchase to be able to kind of do something with. Now, one thing I noticed, and this is just kind of a, a, a an aside, let's go ahead and go back to this farm here, what I called farm number two. If you go into build mode and then follow the road, all the way out to here, you'll see the map maker wrote something. If I typed this in right, I believe what this says is build site. I believe this is a location for a kind of secondary farm or a like build your own farm area kind of thing. So just something I found and just thought it was kind of a cool little Easter egg kind of thing. So that is it. That is Corinthia. Now it is time to render my opinion, let you know what I think. Zero to five scale as always. What do I think of this map? Well, there are a lot of really good things about this map that I really like. But there's a lot of things about this map that I really don't like too. Um, the textures on the roads are just terrible like that that to me it looks like it's glass it just looks like it's as smooth as glass and that really takes the immersion out of it for me now again i can fully understand if this was like some kind of issue when it got ported over to consoles and this just isn't where it needs to be yet and that an update can come out and fix the roads and then then we get the 3d textures and all that stuff and that's fine that's not an issue but as it is right now that really sticks out and these kind of roads go to some very important places like the back entrance to your farm which is right over there but some of the things i like i kind of alluded to them the elevation changes the layouts of the fields the colors now the colors are borderline too much 
if you look here all the wildflowers here you got pretty much every single color you can think of all in one small area and it's like that throughout the entire map now that's that kind of cartoon feeling that i get that i that i mention from time to time and i'm starting to get that i'm just starting to feel like eh, i'm not really feeling this kind of kind of thing but it's just light enough to not be like yes this is for sure i don't like this because it feels like i'm in a disney cartoon or something like that like it's it's just one of those it, it's just enough to be intrusive but not enough to be like overwhelming and off-putting but uh, outside of that I think this is brilliant I, I, I think this has a very good start for uh, for this map there's so much going for it in the elevation changes and this is, like I said earlier, is going to be a map for those who really want to exercise their muscle, quote unquote. And what I mean by that is you're going to have to think long and hard how you're going to get back into some of these fields with bigger sets of equipment, with small headers or, or things like that. Because it's going to be one of those things where like, you come back here, look at this field here. Look at that. That's insane. That's that's ridiculously insane. Let's drive over to our field. I'll just go straight to our field because it's just to the east of us. And go directly at the bottom of our field. Just so we can kind of get a, a magnitude. Look at that. Like we're at the bottom here. That's the top. That is ridiculous ridiculous you're not going to be able to take a harvester i don't think you'll be able to take any harvester straight up you'll have to kind of make your way around and kind of either go you know east west kind of uh thing or um just go south that's that i think that's really the only ways you're going to be able to kind of make your way through these fields with, with um, potentially any harvester really um, now I could be wrong about that, but I don't know. That's, that's one heck of a slope to be able to go up and down. So yeah, I think that's brilliant. I think there's, uh, so much going for this map. There's just a couple of those little issues that kind of take it from it. So if those issues didn't exist, I'd probably give this map a solid four, maybe a four and a half. With those issues, I'm going to knock it down half a point to a three and a half. I think this is still a great map. It's got so much going for it, and there's a lot of uh, different elements that are available on this. There's arable farming. There's uh, animals. There's for, uh, forestry. There's so much stuff that can be done, and there's additional... Uh, production points or his additional products all sorts of things that are available to make it to where it's a really good map to make it a really good map so all that being said i hope you enjoyed this map tour if you did please show me by liking sharing subscribing following commenting doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content and that being said i hope you have a fantastic day take care